Um, so good afternoon. Uh, welcome to our live session entitled Going Cashless to Get Fans Back in the Stadium, powered by Fortress US. Uh, in this session, we're focusing on the transition to going cashless, uh, obviously, which has been gaining pace in sports in the last couple of years uh, with faster transactions fees and increased spending as the main drivers. Obviously, COVID has certainly added uh, impetus to this change as a potentially healthier alternative to handling cash and, and maintaining social distancing. Uh, but can this move also help fans get back into the stadium? Here to answer that question is Britton Miller and Richard Pinnock from Fortress US. Uh, they work with many teams both here in the United States and overseas in Europe, uh, implementing loyalty and payment technology and offering insight into what going cashless means and how it can be used to bring fans back. Uh, so that being said, Britton and Richard, thank you for joining us today. I'll turn it over to you guys and we'll begin. Great, thanks Keith. Um, I'm Britton, I'm the SVP of Client Strategy for Fortress US. Um, as Keith mentioned, um, we're the global leaders in fan engagement and stadium technology. Um, go ahead and uh, click to the next, Lauren. And one more. What does that mean? So Fortress offers, you know, kind of three main modules. So um, when you think about stadium technology, it's automated venue access into the venue. So, you know, the um, automated pods or, um, or uh, turnstiles, um, the contactless ticketing that has become one of the buzzwords as we're trying to get people into the venues. Um, I talked about that um, at the Sports Techie um, Conference back in May as we were beginning to welcome some fans back this summer. Um, and so we're really today focusing on our fan engagement piece, um, which is, you know, consists of loyalty, um, payments, um, and activations. So today we're really focusing on kind of cashless payments and, and activations that come from using cashless payments. The other module that you know comes out of the integration of all these pieces is the rich data platform um, that many teams use to really understand who their fans are. Um, go to the next one. So um, we work with 150 teams around the globe, um, everyone from uh, the Super Bowl and the NFL to um, the Dallas Cowboys, um, the world champion LA Dodgers, um, and Arsenal and Liverpool and many more. Um, so many of these teams kind of use, uh, you know, whether it be our stadium technology with the venue access or the cashless payments and loyalty. Um, so today we're really focusing on cashless payments. Um, go to the next slide. So what does it mean to go cashless? Why would you want to go cashless as a team? And what incentives does it offer a fan to be using cashless payments. Um, and really, you know, cashless has become a buzzword is when you think about making it a little easier for welcoming fans back, but there's many different types of cashless payments. Um, and so it's important to understand, you know, the many different types and some of the benefits um, and incentives you can offer fans based on that type of cashless payment. So Richard's gonna go through, you know, the types of cashless payments when you talk about, you know, there, that there are and, and what benefits there are with those particular type of payments. Um, and then I'm going to give a few examples of what our what our teams are doing um, to incentivize fans to come back into the venue, whether it be before. You know, many of our teams have used these cashless payments for a long time, um, or more recently when you talk about um, welcoming fans back when they've been away for a while. Uh, you know, how well, are teams afternoon. using that to welcome everybody. fans back? Um, so go ahead, Richard. Problems. Um, yeah. So cashless, as as Britton mentioned, there's a couple of. Um, architectures really for, for going cashless. Um, many teams think uh, that cashless, or many teams certainly over in Europe where I'm based, think of cashless as really as the implementation of contactless tap and go bank technology. So if you have an Apple Pay or Google Pay or your normal debit or credit card, of course, all of those today are contactless and are cashless in the sense they're removing um, removing cash from the equation. So many teams, in fact, most stadiums over in Europe today have implemented contactless payments as a way of eliminating cash from the venues. But just implementing a, a tap and go uh, contactless card from a bank, um, all, although it, it creates a cashless environment and it eliminates cash, which is the number one, um, objective, it doesn't really add um, a lot of value to the 
customer experience and certainly from the, from the team perspective. Um, so if you'd like to go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So, um, you know, it, that you get cashless payments, but in doing so, you don't get any of the, the, the additional benefits as I mentioned. You don't get any additional customer data because the data is running through the Visa or the MasterCard networks. You don't get access to in sight of who it is who's making that, that payment necessarily through the payment um, architecture. You don't have the ability as such to, um, to add value to that transactions, to add promotions, to add incentives, to add discounts, to add variable discounts, to be able to reward people with um, SKU level promotions. Um, and in doing so, it's not really adding any additional value to that um, to that customer journey, other than the fact that obviously uh, tap and go payments is generally quicker and it eliminates sort of dirty cash, as we say. Um, and finally, of course, uh, today, not everybody has that type of payment. Certainly the adoption of mobile payments um, is relatively re still relatively immature and still relatively low. Um, and co contactless cards are being rolled out sort of, certainly it's pretty ubiquitous over in Europe, but less so in the United States. And, and, and finally, and I didn't put it on here, but finally, you know, the infrastructure is quite expensive. You have to upgrade your payment terminals to contactless. Um, so for new stadiums, that's fine. So it's for existing stadiums where you have a, you know, 180 to plus tills or plus tills um, point of sales, it, it, it can be quite expensive to roll out contactless um, terminals. So what other approaches are there? Um, so the, the next approach, if you'd like to go to the next one. Thank you. Is to implement a mobile wallet. So this is a virtual um, payment um, wallet that resides inside your mobile app um, as part of your customer experience. Um, and inside that mobile app, they have a digital token. And that digital token represents them as a, as a fan and them as a, as a person, as an individual. And that digital token can be utilized for many services throughout the, the venue. It can be utilized to get into the venue. It can be utilized you know, to park your car. It can be utilized for loyalty. But in this particular purposes and in this particular aspect, we're looking at the digital token really as a payment vehicle. And this approach, as opposed to having a sort of a bank generated or open loop approach, um, has a number of unique advantages. So do you want to go through to the next slide? Thank you. Um, the, uh, you know, the architecture around this really puts that digital token in the middle of your, of your ecosystem. Um, and that digital token is, in, is integrated on the left-hand side through to your point of sale. Um, and that can either be presented, that token can be presented as either a QR code, as you see on the screen here, or uh, for, for teams that are moving down the route of, of NFC, you can implement it as a, through Apple VAS or Google Smart Tap. Um, if you really want to go detailed about it today, you can do it as one tap or two tap as part of a purchase or a, lo a loyalty flow. Um, and on the other end of the equation, you see there is the, you know, you can add um, onto the back end of that, that virtual wallet a whole range of different payment options. And those payment options can be, you know, from uh, attaching to it uh, a, um, a, an existing debit or credit card, your bank card, um, in the same way as you would do to your Uber account or your Starbucks account, you attach your normal payment account to it. Um, you can attach to it also third-party wallets, people like uh, PayPal and Venmo into the back end of it. Um, but also you can build your own reward wa wallet and you can, in fact, you can have multiple reward purses, as it were, attached to the back end of it. The key here is that you're putting a, a layer of intelligence in the middle of that transactional flow. Um, and if you come back to the sort of the the the, the title of this particular event is you know, how, of this particular speech, how to get people back into the venue, you know, one of the ways of getting people back into the venue is to add value into that transactional flow by adding incentives, by adding rewards, by adding variable discounts, by giving people um, uh, value 
that they can then drive, spend inside the venue. And, and the mobile wallet as a closed environment allows you to add a lot more functionality in the, in the cashless payment process. Um, you're still going cashless, but now you're going cashless plus incentives. So do you want to go to the, the next one? You may, you may have to press a couple of, two more times. Sorry. That's it. Very good. Um, so the benefits of this approach, the mobile wallet approach, is yes, you get cashless payments. Um, secondly, it's very easy to deploy. Um, in effect, anybody who downloads your app can automatically, automatically you know, have this mobile wallet integrated and they will have to just go into the app, um, go into the cashless or the, the mobile wallet component of it and add your debit or your credit card or add your, um, you know, your, your PayPal account. You get full customer data because you are seeing all the data on that transaction, how, who it's flowing, flowing through to, well, how much they're spending, SKU level information. So you're getting real customer data on that transaction. Um, at the same time, you can implement real-time incentives based around who that customer is, based around their profile, based around the type of customers. Um, you can use it to, because of the multiple, multiple purses as we have there, you can set up different rules and, 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 um, and um, customer flows for the different types of money that you want to give them. So for instance, if you want to give a renewal incentive, you can give people $200 as a renewal incentive as part of the start of the season, then you can set certain rules as to where that can be spent, when that has to be spent, that that money is spent before they draw, um, uh, they draw money from their existing cash. So your cost to you as, an, as a team or as a venue can set up multiple logic around the loyalty and the incentives. And finally, you have complete financial control over you know, how the money is flowing, how it's then allocated out to the various different merchants. Um, and you can also you know, see, for instance, which bank those, um, you know, the, 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 the customer is using to fund. So you can support, for instance, you know, supporting giving additional loyalty to your, um, your, um, you know, your sponsor banks and so on. Want to go through to the next slide, please? So um, we wanted to just now briefly take you through some examples of how customers um, have used these um, digital wallets or mobile wallets um, to really drive additional value to their custom to their fans as they come back into the stage in Britain. Do you want to take some examples? Yep. So uh, you know, many teams are using load-in tickets and you've used them for a long time. You know, you load tickets based on the section they're sitting in, price band through the ticketing system or price code, um, and you get $10 of value along with the price of the ticket that can use it, you know, at um, F and B. Um, and so obviously that's something where we enable um, teams to do. Um, but another way that people are using loaded tickets is the enabling the fan themselves to load value um, that they can load onto the actual ticket to send to a client, a friend, a child. Um, so, you know, load $10 of value onto that ticket and, and send to a client who's coming to the game um, so that they have money that they can use in the venue. Um, so that's a popular one. Or again, um, you know, thanking someone for coming so you're loading value um, onto their ticket that they can use. Um, the big one recently has been, um, you know, how do you, with the reward value and stored value, obviously people in the past have done um, the renewal incentives, you know, so, uh, renew your season tickets early um, and you get, you know, $500 in, um, in renewal value that's loaded into your mobile wallet, into your account that you can use all year long, um, whether it be in the retail store or an FB. Um, but more recently, um, obviously, with seasons not finishing, um, many of the teams were left in a place where they had to potentially refund money of, of you know, tickets not used, um, games not played. Um, and so many teams actually turned to this and said, you know, instead of us refunding you the hundred dollars that, you know, of, of unused tickets that you didn't use, we'll give you one hundred and twenty five back into your mobile wallet that you can use next year. Um, and when you think about incentives, um, you know, if the incentive is a good one, people will opt in. Um, and, and so that was another way people used the reward value or the store value this year about of, you know, encouraging people, you know, 
here, come back, you know, we'll give you this value that you can use when you come back to the venue um, for F and B or for retail. Um, gift cards, obviously, um, that's another common one where, um, you know, you can load value and, and give as a Christmas present or, you know, for, for, for any reason um, that you want to, you know, give value to a friend. Um, and then, you know, direct authorization payments is, is kind of a new one that we've been rolling out to teams. Um, you know, directly tying your, um, you know, current credit card into your mobile wallet. So, you know, you're scanning what you see right there, your mobile wallet, um, but it's directly pulling the funds like a, you know, an Uber model from, from your current credit card. Um, why would teams want to do this? Well, by doing this, it enables you to actually give um, various incentives to the fan. So you can reward them for, um, you know, points based on every um, purchase. You can reward them with additional cashback incentives. Um, you can give them discounts. So, you know, because of who you are, you're a full season ticket holder. Um, on every purchase, you get 10% off. Um, and for teams, it also gives a rich understanding of, you know, how people are, you know, um, using funds within the building, who's coming, um, you know, what are they um, spending money on, where. Um, and not only that, you can also tie sponsor offers. So, um, you know, we want to give you a free Coke or, you know, something else of that nature, um, you know, all within the actual kind of promos or campaign offers that are in the mobile wallet itself. Um, and then again, another one um, more recently is linking to a sponsor bank. So um, we did this with the Padres. They have, you know, one of their major sponsors is a bank. Um, and they were able to directly tie it back to, um, you know, the actual bank itself. Um, huge incentives also to tie directly back to, you know, obviously what the sponsor would like to push is they, they you know, they don't want just their name, um, you know, as a sponsor, you know, within the venue itself, but actually having a real tie to their initiatives uh, is a great way to kind of tie a sponsor all the way through a program. Um, so kind of another example of how we're using um, the various different forms of, of you know, cashless um, in different ways, but to incentivize I mean, fans to, to come and, you know, spend money the venue. Wallet, is that it's just so easy to deploy. Um, I mean, the, the integrations with existing point of sales are, are, are already built. Um, we have integrations with pretty much every point of sale um, that is out there, both in, both in concessions, both on retail. Um, the integrations with your, the, you know, the mobile app providers are built so you can, you know, it, you can um, federate or you can launch the mobile wallet in, inside the app with an, with an SSO. Um, so these, you know, this, this is a, as a, as a methodology or as a, as an architecture to roll out um, to, to all your fans very, very, very quickly can be done. And we've had teams um, that have deployed full deployment mobile wallets in six weeks from you know from a decision to go to actually going live and operating inside a stadium so it as britain said it's, you know it's it, it provides a very rich environment not only to to deliver value to your customers but also a huge amount of additional data and uh, service opportunities to the teams as well All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, as Richard mentioned, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out to them. You can also visit their expo booth um, labeled Fortress US. So please let them know if you have any follow up questions. But thank you so much, Richard and Britton, for taking the time to discuss with us today. My pleasure. Thank you very much for having us. Bye. Thank you.